Well, blessed Wednesday to you as we come to your daily encouragement. And uh, we are at the bottom of uh, page 94, and it is the Ministry of Meekness. Now, we've gone through three sections of Dietrich Bonhoeffer's book here. It is called Life Together. The first one focuses on being alone. The other one focuses on being together. And now we're at the what ministry looks like in the midst of those circumstances. And so he's quoting from Romans 12, 3, and he'll quote from Romans 12, 16. He says, He who would learn to serve must first learn to think little of himself. Let no man think of himself more highly than he ought to think, as it says in Romans 12, 3. This is the highest and most profitable lesson, truly to know and to despise ourselves, to have no opinion of ourselves, and to think always well and highly of others is great wisdom and perfection, according to Thomas a. Kempis. Be not wise in your own conceits, Romans twelve sixteen. And I think this is a lesson we all need to learn. Now, maybe we acknowledge that we have learned it. I know for the many of us who grew up in the Lutheran church, a lot of times we learn that right at the very beginning, that our life starts not with a plus, but a minus. We are in bondage, or as some would say, captive to sin, and we cannot free ourselves. We are reminded that we need a Savior. And this is actually the good and best way that Luther and others have focused on our Christian walk. Our Christian walk needs to acknowledge that life is more than just our needs. It is about others' needs. And specifically, it is about the needs of what the Lord wants to do with our life. Now, the Lord does promise us the kingdom. The Lord does promise us uh, that we are sons and daughters of the king. The Lord has adopted us. There are great benefits to what the Lord has done. But we uh, need to be reminded that it was not because we are any good or better than any other human who has walked the earth. Now let's think about that. Maybe there are some that you do think naturally that you are better than some. At least I don't kill. At least I don't commit adultery, or at least I don't steal. Maybe just name, name your thing that you maybe have just a little bit of pride. Or as many of us have experienced, we might watch that television show called Cops or other things, and you can see by their life that your life is maybe just a little tad bit better than someone who is seems to be prone in the cycle of being arrested or finding themselves on the wrong side of the tracks, so to speak. But we have to acknowledge that there can be some conceit in our life, even if it's a little, where we do maybe judge ourselves maybe slightly better than others. And we got to confront that and recognize that 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 is trying to find our foundation in something other than the grace of God. Maybe we are, maybe we are not better than the people we might perceive on TV or other places that we are naturally just a little bit better. Granted, I've often joked with people as we enter Bible study, anybody commit murder, anybody did this or that? And we probably pray that no one raises their hands. But all of us, no matter how little it may be, have fallen short of the glory of God. And the only thing that we can stand on is grace. And so that is the beginning of learning meekness. That is the beginning of learning humility. Is that it was by the sheer grace of God that we can stand. It is by the sure grace of God, we might say, that we might find ourselves in the wrong side or on the wrong tracks doing the wrong things. Now, psychologists will label that. Is it innate in a person? Is it society that molds the person? And that debate will continue. It's an interesting debate, but it doesn't matter in the long run. 
what matters is that we have been graced by God. And how do we know that, you might ask? Because God is preaching to you through people like me and others. Anybody in the sound of my voice is given the opportunity to be graced by God. Well, you, I haven't known you for maybe very long. Maybe that's what you're going to say. Well, have you been baptized at some point? Yeah. That's where God's trying to touch the grace, his grace with your life. Have you heard the voice of other preachers, other people, maybe even the experienced uh, mother, grandmother, or grandfather, or some other relative who has touched you in some way, talking about the grace of God? That's the only requirement, is that we are human and that God's opportunity of grace has been grace to us, blessed us. Have you been given the Lord's Supper? You are worthy because God loves you. Not because of anything that you and I did that's any better than others. Now, the reason I stress this is because that's where ministry starts. Ministry starts not with wanting my position or the particular church or the particular place where I serve God. Ministry starts in the grace of God to do with what we have in the place that we have and the humbleness to accept that calling and only change if it is sure that God has called you to a new place. But it all starts not by achievements, not by skill per se, but by acknowledging that we are sinners humble sinners, saved by grace. And as Thomas a. Kempis, a very famous writer from the medieval period, says, that is the start of perfection. Knowing that we are not perfect, knowing that we will probably not be perfect, and even we cannot reach perfection by our own inward abilities. It is only by the grace of God. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. Take care. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.